the state of Florida uh, is running a very large budget surplus yet again. Uh, the state of Florida is going to continue to accelerate repaying uh, the outstanding state debt, and we now have the lowest per capita debt in the entire United States amongst all 50 states. We'll be cutting taxes again. Uh, we'll be providing support for education, for infrastructure, environmental restoration. So it'll be uh, another example of this state leading the way and succeeding, while many other states are not. And so we're, we're doing it right. We're going to keep doing that. But I think everybody should be proud uh, about what's happened in the state of Florida and how we continue to lead the way on so many different issues. And it's a big contrast to what they're doing um, in Washington. I mean, they're now jamming through another spending bill that's increasing spending dramatically over and above what they had agreed to last year, which was also a bad deal, spending money on a lot of things that are not appropriate in terms of taxpayer dollars, a lot of earmarks, and then, of course, funding the Biden immigration policies, which have led to this massive problem at the border. Uh, so they continue to add to debt. They continue to fund a lot of the problems that the federal government's inflicting on us, uh, and this is just par for the course. They keep doing it over and over again. So uh, that's not how we roll here. Uh, we take action. We make sure to get the job done. But um, very disappointing to see such lack uh, of action in Washington, D.C., to try to fix some of these really, really significant problems. And, oh, by the way, uh, the border and the illegal immigration was caused by the government. Uh, the inflation has been caused by the government, so these guys create problems, but they never seem to solve problems. Uh, we're here today in Live Oak to be able to uh, issue some really great support for a lot of our local communities. We're joined here by Florida Secretary of Commerce Alex Kelly, uh, Travis Land from Suwannee County Board of Commissioners, um, Alston Kelly, Madison County Board Chair, and then Big Bend Technical College Director Jody Tillman. Uh, one of the things that we've said when Hurricane Idalia came first, the Busy Bee got open right away. I mean, I don't know if it was closed at all, but it wasn't closed for very long. And sure enough, when people had had problems, because you had some places in like Madison County where the trees went down, people couldn't even get into their homes, uh, people would congregate at the Busy Bee uh, to be able to, 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 to seek help and support. And so we had people here and we were able to help people who had shown up at Busy Bee, but we really appreciate uh, the role that, that Busy Bee played. And, you know, you have others that have done well, too. I mean, Waffle House, I don't know if they ever closed. They were open very quickly uh, in some of those areas, and we were able to stop by there. So, so this is just kind of how, how it goes. But, and then, of course, the state of Florida, uh, we had all the bridges reopened within 12 hours of the storm, uh, cut and toss crews to clear roads. Uh, in less than 24 hours for the main state roads. Uh, also, power restoration, uh, within five days, you had 96% of all power outages were restored. So that was as quick as it's ever been done. And it's not that easy to do in some of the rural areas because you have a lot of, yet a lot of debris, uh, you had a lot of trees, you had a lot of issues. So, so, that, so that was good. And then there were many other things uh, that, that were done. Uh, we've supported local businesses who were impacted, more than $10 million in emergency bridge loans. Uh, just a few weeks ago, we announced $5.3 million in rural infrastructure fund awards that will help Idalia impacted communities who are working to strengthen public infrastructure and additional job opportunities. So, so, we, so we did a lot initially, continue to do more. But, you know, the point I always make, and hopefully I don't have to make it more, we don't, don't get storms, so when you have a major hurricane, there's the initial response, which is important, get people back on their feet. But then there's the, the kind of the long-term uh, things that, that you need to do. And that doesn't happen in days or weeks. A lot of times that can take months, and sometimes it can even take years. And so with that in mind, uh, we have something in Florida in the governor's office called the Job Growth Grant Fund. And the legislature appropriates money uh, usually every year, usually pretty decent amounts. I don't know, what did they put in the budget? 75 million, so that's pretty good for this next year. What did we have last year? We, 75. So, so 75 million. And what that does is it lets us in the governor's office work with our state agencies and work with local communities to provide grants for either infrastructure improvements or for workforce 
training and workforce development. So you have counties will ask for, for money, cities, whoever, and then we have all these possibilities and we try to choose the most high impact awards that we can. Well, since we are coming to the end of the fiscal year, well, I guess we have a few more months, uh, but we are uh, have a new budget coming in that's gonna, gonna be passed soon. We look, okay, I wanna look, make sure we use this job growth grant money and be impactful. So we felt that doing it in these awards in Idalia impacted communities would go a long way. Partially because you have the, the aftermath of the storm, but partially because these are some of the more rural areas that may not have the same economic base that some of our other counties and other parts of the state had. So we decided to take this job growth grant fund and make an impact uh, here in North Florida. So today I'm pleased to announce three awards through our job growth grant fund for a total of $9.2 million for infrastructure improvements and, and economic development in Swanee, Madison, and Taylor counties. And we're awarding $2.2 million to Swanee County to support the construction of a wastewater plant at the Swanee County Catalyst site, a 500-acre industrial park. Now, this investment will support the expansion of an existing business within the Suwannee County Catalyst site and expand capacity at the site to allow for new businesses to move into the area. And there are now four companies that are interested in taking advantage of this site, uh, which are focused in the manufacturing industry. So this project is estimated to create 300 high-demand jobs right here in Suwannee County. And immediately following Hurricane Idalia, this project had to be put on hold. Uh, but now, today, we're happy to partner with Suwannee County to get it back on track. We're also awarding $2 million to Madison County for road, road widening and resurfacing that will facilitate the expansion of the Madison County Industrial Park. These improvements will make sure that the tractor trailers and other commercial vehicles can easily access the industrial park. Once these improvements are complete, there's already an advanced manufacturing company with plans to move into the industrial park. This project is estimated to add an additional 90 jobs. And we're also awarding $5 million to Big Bend Technical College in Taylor County to construct a 10,000 square foot advanced manufacturing teaching facility and this facility will be used to expand instruction and training for careers in the manufacturing industry and to purchase state-of-the-art equipment for the facility. Uh, the facility will increase the availability of courses for high-wage, high-demand jobs in the manufacturing industry and create a talent pipeline to attract more great businesses to the area. Workforce education and attracting new business is especially important in Taylor County because almost immediately after the hurricane hit, Georgia Pacific Mill closed in Taylor County. Uh, and in my direction, Florida Commerce and nearly a dozen other agencies uh, have been continuously engaged in the community on the ground to help residents laid off because of the mill closure to land back on their feet. And we're gonna continue to help the community uh, with resources to create good, reliable jobs for its residents. Uh, but these, uh, this award uh, will be uh, a good uh, foundation uh, for, for future jobs and for, for business investment. So we're excited about these three Job Growth Grant Fund awards. We're also excited to be able to announce the award of an additional $50 million to Hurricane Idalia impacted communities through the Florida Division of Emergency Management. So this funding uh, was appropriated uh, several months ago uh, in the special legislative session. And I wanna thank the legislature for responding so quickly. The funding will support 13 recovery projects throughout 10 Idalia impacted counties, Citrus, Dixie, Hamilton, Hernando, Jefferson, Lafayette, Madison, Pinellas, Suwannee, and Taylor counties. These projects include debris removal, beach renourishment, infrastructure repairs, and waterway dredging. So I think that's gonna be really, really significant. And we thank again the legislature for coming through with that funding. Finally, to further support Idalia impacted communities, I'm also announcing the award of $6.8 million through the Florida Department of Transportation's Small County Outreach Program to support road resurfacing and widening projects in rural communities. This, is in, this includes 
2.2 million to Taylor County, 1.5 million to Levy County, 1.2 million to Madison County, and 1.2 million to Swanee County, as well as 769,000 to Jefferson County. So our Department of Transportation worked with all these counties to assess different needs and crafted these awards to meet specific road improvement needs. So uh, this just shows uh, today's announcement that uh, when we said we understood there'd be things we needed to do in the future, that, that uh, you could take us at our word and we follow through. Uh, so I think this stuff's going to make a big, big difference, and we're excited to be able to be here. So uh, we will present these checks. So do we have the – so first we'll do the check for Suwannee County. So anyone from Suwannee want to come up and, and take this? All right. Sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we've got um, Madison County, two million smackers. Technical College, five million dollars. Oh man, we got a big crew here. All right. We good? All right. Congratulations. All right, so um, we'll hear from some of the speakers. So our Commerce Secretary, Alex Kelly, will be first up. Well, Governor, Governor, thank you so much, uh, and thank you, everyone, for, for having us here today. As the Governor said, um, you know, these investments today in Suwannee, Madison counties, and Big Bend Technical College, and really serving the, the region, these investments represent a, a consistent commitment from the governor, uh, from the state of Florida, to investing in ready infrastructure, site-ready, job-ready infrastructure, and ready workforce to support um, to support those job sites. Targeted investments that we've seen over the last five years have continually elevated rural communities throughout the state and in Florida overall, for that matter. I investments like these led by the governor have, they really are the reason that Florida is number one in the country now five years running uh, for job formations uh, and business formations around the country. Number one in talent development uh, around the country. But to, to kind of dial in a little bit specifically on why we're here today, these are the reasons why, and we're a little competitive at Florida Commerce, uh, these are the reasons why we've passed our neighbors to the north in Georgia and states like New York in manufacturing jobs. We're closing in right now, in fact, in Florida, we're closing in on 430,000 manufacturing jobs throughout the state. That was an un unheard of, of thought years ago. Almost 430,000 jobs, over 25,000 manufacturing businesses throughout the state. And when you, when you think about what that actually means, 430,000 manufacturing jobs indirectly creates another 2.8 million jobs throughout the state. If you think about it from sourcing materials, supply chain, shipping logistics distribution, and, and ultimately ultimately the endpoint sale to, to a customer, there's 2.8 million jobs that are elevated because of the 430,000 manufacturing jobs in the state. And so all three of these job growth grant fund investments, they really are dialed into manufacturing, particularly advanced manufacturing, uh, which is something that the state of Florida is rapidly, rapidly rising in. Why is that so, why is that so important? Why is that focus so important for the governor, 
for rural communities throughout the state. Why is that so important for communities right here, like in Suwannee County, where you're really trying to take an ownership of the economic resiliency of the community? It's important because most industries, if you look at tourism, transportation, healthcare, most industries, every job creates about one and a half to three jobs to support, to support the job in the industry. Manufacturing is a little bit different. In, in manufacturing, because there's, there's, there's a big story before what happens when you manufacture something, there's a big story about what happens after. Manufacturing, every job, depending on the kind of manufacturing, non-durable goods, durable goods, creates somewhere between five to seven and a half jobs. So one job created here in Suwannee County the 300 jobs that, that this grant will help create at the site, every one of those jobs is going to create somewhere between five to seven and a half other jobs for the region. It's a huge reason why manufacturing has become the leading contributor to Florida's GDP. It's a huge reason why we're seeing rural communities take that ownership of their economic resiliency. And it, manufacturing also is very sort of personal at a small business and household level too. Manufacturing jobs, of those, of those 25,000 manufacturing businesses in the state, 80% of them have 20 employees or less. These are small businesses. These are startups. These are great ideas that are born out of a community that a, a, a person has a dream and they create something. And, and these are small businesses. And manufacturing jobs in Florida, we just did a study this past year on manufacturing. Manufacturing jobs in the state of Florida average Average wage is $75,000 a year. The average wage for all industries in the state of Florida is $64,000 a year. So a job in manufacturing is on average an $11,000 boost to a household. That's a game changer for anyone. I can see Jimmy Norris nodding. That's a, that's a game changer for anyone. And, and the work you're putting in here with the support of the governor is a game changer for, for the community. It's these kind of targeted investments too that we're seeing that are really raising the profile of North Florida. Back before Christmas, we did a, a tour. We were in Putnam County, Baker County, Bradford, Columbia, and here in Suwannee, here with Commissioner Land, here with Jimmy, going to the Catalyst site. And North Florida is, is getting the attention of people across the country. You have great transportation corridors, I-10, I-75, great railway. You have great opportunities. You have available land, sites that you're working hard to develop with the support of the state, sites that are attractive to business and industry. And I think maybe most importantly, you have great communities that are excited and energized for these jobs and, and are ready for these jobs. And, and that's exciting and attractive to companies from all around. You know, with that, I just I do want to just kind of finish, though, with a, with a special about, about Big Bend Tech. Um, the work at Big Bend Technical College, the governor covered a big part of the why um, because of it, not just the Dahlia, but the mill closure there as well. The work at Big Bend Tech has become really kind of personal for a lot of us. And I, and I, and I don't think it's a stretch. I'm going to you know, mention to our friend, State Senator Corey Simon, Senator Simon, our team at the Department of Commerce, Department of Education, Career Source. We spent a lot of time down at Big Bend Tech recently. I think a good, good chunk of the team was there more this week. Um, the, the Big Bend Tech has a vision. Thank you, Jody, for leading that vision uh, for, for advanced manufacturing to really support the region and to really become not reliant on one company, but to really have a broad base of great industry and a broad base of talent that can support manufacturing through, throughout the region. This has just become a very personal endeavor for a lot of us because, you know, I, I think in Tallahassee, we're not far away. You really can't find a state agency that doesn't probably have a few employees who went through Big Bend Tech. So it's, 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 it's personal for us. We're going to be there with you and to support that vision uh, and to see you through it. Governor, thank you. When you mentioned those rural infrastructure grants and other grants, you know, already this fall uh, and, and, and just a month ago, Governor, you've already awarded over $6 million in, in different infrastructure grants to Taylor County um, to support the community. And this is going to bring that total investment to over $11 million. Um, and, and it's really, truly necessary because what we've seen is those kind of moments a, it's hugely impactful to the region. Our educational institutions and some of these significant employers that we have throughout the region, they support the whole region. They have a broad impact uh, because of the supply chain for many of the companies that we work with. But the other thing is, I think all the investments that we're talking about here today, 
they're they're very personal in a sense too because we love these communities you live here because you love these communities so many of you raise a family here and you want moms and dads to be able to say to their children that hey if you want to stay in this community you love there's great opportunity for you here in this community you want their, you want moms and dads to be able to tell their kids they have a great option great choices to have a great job, to, to raise a family, to own a business. So, um, you know, I just I just say, well, we're gonna, Jody, we're gonna be there with you, but we're really excited to support all the counties here today. Governor, again, thank you so much for your leadership and vision. All right, Travis. Thank you, Governor. I will keep it very short. Um, first off, I would like to thank Busy B. Uh, they're a stakeholder in our community. If we could, could we give them a quick round of applause? Thank you, Busy Bee, for hosting us. Um, on behalf of Swanee County, um, our staff and our board, um, we would like to thank thank you, Governor, for coming today, and, and your staff and Alex as well. Thank you, um, Governor. You hit on it a few minutes ago, and, and our board wants to sincerely thank you for that immediate response that that, that you sent um, to Swanee County. Um, post impact for Hurricane Adelia. Um, it was overwhelming, it was fast, and we couldn't have gotten through it without you. So thank you. I would be amiss if I didn't thank a few other uh, folks while I have the opportunity. Um, Senator Simon, Representative Shove, uh, Kevin Guthrie and his staff from Florida Department of Emergency Management, Secretary Evans from Florida DOT and his staff, um, Commissioner Simpson, and the Florida Department of Agriculture and their staff for all the support that they sent um, to our impacted area after Adelia Impact. Um, we're forever for great, grateful for that and will always be appreciative. Community resilience, as Alex said, is very, very important, um, especially in rural areas such as Swanee County and, and across the state. Our farms, businesses, and families depend on their local government leaders uh, to sustain that. Um, Swanee County is focused on com converting key opportunities into real world pro projects that will stabilize and furthermore develop resiliency um, with economic infrastructure here. We're forever grateful for the creative collaboration and insightful partnership with Florida Commerce and your staff, Alex, thank you, and the Florida Job Growth Grant Fund. Um, they are vital to developing our community. The $2.2 million grant for the wastewater improvements truly complement the existing effort for job creation at the Catalyst site. Again, thank you. We're very appreciative, and we look forward to working with you guys in the future. All right. All right. All right. Uh, Chair Kelly, Madison County. Well, I just want to take this opportunity to thank the governor personally and to thank him for all the work that he has done throughout the area for that, especially Madison County when we were hit with Adelia. You came personally and helped distribute food. You came and got us the overwhelming work we needed to get the debris picked up, and we're still having it picked up by you. And we want to thank you. The I can only echo what uh, Professor Lamb said. Um, the different agencies have been wonderful to us. We have had a tremendous amount of work done uh, throughout the county and, and still being done. And many of our areas and this two million dollar grant is going to go greatly to help us uh, with our agricultural programs that we are so fond of in our Madison County and Swanee County and uh, it's only two exits down the road where this is going to be put in to help put in um, a company that's going to not only improve the agricultural life but uh, create like I said about 90 jobs and um, as we've said before uh, with the plant closing in Perry, uh, that has impacted not only Taylor County, it's impacted every county. Uh, there are many people in Madison County who have spent their lives working at the mill in, in Perry, and now they have no job there, in Swanee County too, I'm sure. And so it is wonderful to have us uh, have the uh, cooperation with the state agencies and the governor, you have been absolutely phenomenal and can't thank you enough. Thank you so much. All righty. Okay, from uh, Big Ben Technical College, uh, Jody Tillman. I, 
I'd like to begin by saying I already thought you could pretty much find anything you ever wanted at a Busy Bee. I never dreamed a $5 million job growth bet would be one of those things. I'd like to begin by saying how blessed and thankful I am to be a resident of this great state and of the North Florida region and to be afforded the opportunity to be a public school educator under the leadership of our amazing governor. Governor Sanders, it is my honor on behalf of Big Bend Technical College faculty, staff, and students, Taylor County School Superintendent Alicia Bashirs, our school board members that are here to accept this job growth grant. Our community and school were dealt not one but two devastating blows this fall, but Taylor County, like our other regions here, are resilient. And as a community, we began the process of determining what was needed to transition to the future. Many thanks to our legislator, Senator Corey Simon and Representative Jason Schof, Commerce Secretary Alex Ke Florida Commerce Secretary Alex Kelly, Career Source and the Department of Education, who are all in our community and on our campus for guidance and assistance even before the storm degree was cleared and the mill silenced. While BBTC already has several outstanding manufacturing programs, the idea to build an advanced manufacturing showcase was born out of several meetings with our industry leaders. The consistent message heard was the need to ensure a manufacturing workforce for the future that would be made up of multi-skilled technicians who have the knowledge and abilities to successfully work in advanced manufacturing. From these conversations, the idea was conceived to build this facility. It will introduce students to advanced manufacturing through interactive, multimedia, project-based learning built around real-world industry challenges. Plans are to create this 10,000 square foot facility to prepare, prepare adult and high school students for nationally recognized industry certifications and credentials while training for the most in-demand manufacturing careers. Students will learn on the same equipment they will encounter in the workplace, which will reduce employers' needs to provide additional training. Additionally, it is our vision that this facility will serve as a field trip destination to introduce K-12 students to advanced manufacturing, a continuing education opportunity for those already employed to learn new skills, and to showcase the Big Bend region to employers wishing to open or relocate to our region due to our ability to connect materials, processes, systems, and talent for current and emerging, emerging manufacturing options. Once again, thank you, Governor DeSantis. We want you to know that BBTC took your workforce challenge to heart and are working diligently to do our share in ensuring Florida is number one in the nation for our workforce and training programs by 2030. All right, well, we're excited to be able to, to make a difference, and uh, we're excited to be back here. And, you know, I know they're doing – so did they, did they say the Busy Bee that's going to be in Columbia, it's going to be much bigger than this one? Yes, sir, four times the size. Four times the size? Yes, so what do you – I mean, what more can you put in? <laughs> are you going to have um, – are you going to have the same vendors that are going to be in? Or are you going to have more or what? You're going to start doing like sandwiches and stuff? Yes, sir. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's great. Yeah. No, we, um, you know, when I'm out and about, which I am frequently, uh, I've got young kids, and so I'll oftentimes bring them back something from where I'm at. So Monday, I spoke at the Florida Strawberry Festival down in Plant City. And if you've ever been down, first of all, the strawberries are unbelievable. And it's still going on this week all the way through the 10th of March, but like just massive juicy strawberries it's like i mean it's it's you know you can get them good in the supermarket but not this good but then they'll do shortcakes and they'll do put them on donuts all kinds of stuff um uh, well i brought my kids back different stuff um got some of the the strawberry um uh, shortcake stuff they had like strawberry cookies they had all kind of stuff so that was that well then today from busy bee i mean look you have all the all this can i mean so I'm going to bring them back, cotton candy, something else. I, I don't know, but I, I know that um, if the kids don't go to sleep uh, on time tonight, then I'll probably be the one to blame. But that's just kind of uh, the way it goes of, of, of trying, to, trying to be a, a good dad. But, you know, we appreciate 
the, the busy bee with excited about the expansion. I know they're going to be doing a, a Bucky's down in the uh, Ocala area. That's in the works. Uh, so there's a lot of a uh, lot of exciting things going on in the state of Florida. There's a lot of people traveling too. That's always been the case, but it's been um, even more. We've had really really strong years economically, tourism and the like, and we're just going to keep it going. So uh, so thank you all, and I'm happy to take a question or two. No, I know. I, oh, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. For sure. It's all good. Okay. Anybody? The good of the order? Anything else we can do to be helpful? Speak now or forever hold your peace. All right. Well, good deal. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, we did. Uh, we we provided state money to increase deputy salaries in rural communities uh, because obviously you're recruiting. You know, it used to be a job at the sheriff's office open. There'd be a line a mile long. Uh, back in the day. Well, now times have changed. I mean, I think Florida, we've created a, a good environment for law enforcement, at least we've tried. But a lot of other places, it's been a really uh, thankless task because the communities don't support law enforcement. So we've actually recruited a lot of people from these other states. You guys, have you used any of the bonuses since we've put them in? Oh, you have. Okay, good, good. So we're doing these $5,000 bonuses. So you'll have like a police officer in Seattle they get treated horribly, soft on crime policies. They can come to Florida right off the bat. They get $5,000 signing bonus. And then oftentimes, I would say in almost all the time, you're in a community that appreciates the job that law enforcement uh, does. But those $5,000 bonuses are not limited to recruiting people from out of state. If you're new, so the younger people that choose to go into law enforcement, they also can, can qualify. So Floridians that have potentially a lot of different opportunities. If they choose law enforcement, they get $5,000 right off the top as well. So we've done, I think, the right thing. That's part of the reason our crime rate's at a 50-year low. You know, we're in a retail establishment. You look at the retail theft in this country where some of the communities have legalized shoplifting. You could go in and they say, well, if you steal less than a thousand, then that's fine. No, it's not fine. And, and it causes havoc in communities and it, it hurts the rule of law. And so we've in Florida, since I've been governor, we've had a 30% reduction in retail theft, but uh, we're gonna do more in this legislative session. We have a, a package of reforms coming through that I'll sign uh, once it gets to my desk uh, that's gonna make sure that we're dropping the hammer on, on retail thefts, on theft rings, on uh, social media inspired mob thieves, because they'll all go and they'll take, and they say if 20 people go and take, then you can't, you can't stop them because they're going, you know, there's so many of them, right? Well, that's a theory. Well, no, we're gonna put the kibosh on that as well. Porch pirates, you order something from online, they drop the package off on your front door, someone steals it, you're not going to want to do that in Florida. So I think this is really, really positive. But um, it all starts with having, having good people in law enforcement. And we've been able to do that in Florida because uh, we know uh, how important it is. So we appreciate uh, what, you, what you're doing. We appreciate all your deputies. And you can count on our support going forward. All right. Thanks, everyone. God bless.